you know, and, and I think you know your drug habit is getting out of control when you go into the pawn shop and it looks exactly like your living room used to. <laughs> For 30 years, actor and comedian Greg Fleet has battled with an all-consuming drug habit. Well, I don't know, I said, what's it like? And they said to me, it's better than sex. And I said, well, if you mean the kind of sex I've been having recently, that's no great recommendation. <laughs> It began at age 19, when he scored heroin for the first time in St Kilda. For all of the love that I have for St Kilda, I've used in a hell of a lot of places. That McDonald's there, probably about six or eight addresses on this street up here. This pub here, used quite a bit in that park. On this tram, remarkably, and in any number of uh, cafes and coffee shops and uh, I used to use in their toilets. It's always very classy to... Um, take drugs in a place where normal people go to the toilet. It's really exhausting being a drug addict, you know. It's a never-ending quest for, you know, money and drugs and, uh, you know, and time and, you know... Greg Fleet's addiction spiralled into a life of deceit. But then, uh, after about 12 years, I thought I should stop taking heroin because there, are, there were other things I wanted to do with my life. Uh, there were things I needed to do, like uh, the dishes, for example. <laughs> <laughs> this 1997 TV program, called so Ten Years in a Long-Sleeved Shirt, was about Greg's former life as a drug addict. The thing was, while I was doing the show, I still was. So it was kind of a lie. The lies within lies within lies, that, that created sort of drove, drove me further into addiction. You know? Uh, I went to a drug rehab place, I went to a drug rehabilitation place and I stayed there for, you know, about a second. <laughs> well, there was no heroin there, you know, so it was, it was insane. There is a desperation that comes with addiction that, you know, you will go to incredible lengths to get it and you'll do things that appall you. So my reasons for needing the money would become more intense. And uh, numerous times I told people, um, people in my family had died or people were incredibly sick or my mother had been hit by a car. I mean, terrible, terrible things. Born in the United States, Greg Fleet moved to Geelong in Victoria with his family when he was four. Life at home was turbulent and confusing and when Greg was ten years old, his father committed suicide. So his marriage was dysfunctional, his marriage wasn't working at all. Um, probably one out of five husbands in Australia wanted to kill him because he'd slept with their wives. Um, his business had gone pear-shaped, so that wasn't working. And everything was going wrong, and so one day he left his car in a pier, left a note with his solicitor, and that was that. He, right. He'd killed himself. Yeah. And so but three years later, Greg's father was spotted working at a real estate agency in Melbourne. So my mother one day walked into his office and I imagine he would have just been horrified. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he had started another family under a different name, um, had two children, um, and when my mother confronted him, because he was so charming, he charmed his way back in with her because he realised he could be in a lot of legal trouble with her. So he dumped them the same way he dumped us initially. He dumped them completely, savagely, brutally and got back together with my mother for a while and eventually left again. This had a deep impact on Greg's life. But most people I know who've used heroin or still do, when someone dies, one of the first things they will do is go and get more heroin and use it. And it's because it's a painkiller and it's a way of blocking out the emotional pain of what is going on. The Lucky to be alive after years of drug abuse, Greg Fleet has decided to set the record straight in his memoir, These Things Happen. It's a lot more. It's a, I, I figure it's a never-ending process, you know, yeah. like the, um, uh, the quest for, for truth. And, and I think having a child, I've got a 13-year-old daughter, having a daughter um, makes that stuff kind of important. You know, you start wanting to be accountable and wanting to be, you know, if I'm expecting her to be honest and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff, I have to be myself, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing up there? No, 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 pup. Come here. Come here, you duffer. You can't climb trees. You're not a pussycat. You're not a pussycat. You're a pup dog. 
you know, it's, you've got two choices. You either, you know, get on with cleaning up that mess, and you know, it's, which is very hard, yeah. and and you know, trying to make amends with everyone, or do what I always did, which was just throw yourself back down into the hole. Right. So. Um, until the last time, and as I say in the book, you know, you've got to believe in the last time, and uh, I, I do, I certainly do. <laughs>